Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is HUD? The add hitbox node. So this video is going to cover a little bit more than the add hitbox node. We can see that node here because the add hitbox node goes in conjunction with the hitbox functions and events that we're going to have to override. So we're going to cover how they work as well. Now the add hitbox node is pretty simple. It literally adds a invisible box on our HUD that will react to our clicks and allow us to uh, do something based on whatever happens. It's really as simple as that. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's hit play. This is my hitbox. If I go ahead and click on it, we're going to see the word jump. And that's it. Nothing fancy, but it's a box somewhere in my screen that's reacting to me clicking to it. And that's the way it's set up. So let's look at the add hitbox node. It takes in a target of a HUD. Since we're going to do this on the draw HUD anyways, we don't have to worry about this. We're going to be inside our HUD event. It'll take a position. So where in the top left corner is our hitbox going to be? And how big is it going to be? So in this case, I'm putting it at 100x, 100y, and I want to be 200 and 200. Now this, the input name, is a requirement in order to actually know which hitbox you clicked on. This is whatever you want. It's just simply a name. In this case, I typed in jump. It could be whatever you want, but this is how you identify the hitbox. Because hitboxes, when they are clicked on, have a generic event that simply passes in the name that was clicked on. Consumes input is basically, if you clicked on this box, when this happens, should it check for any other clicks? This is useful if you have multiple clicks layering on each other and things like that. If you have this checked, it's not going to check anymore. It's just going to stop for the hitboxes for this frame. Priority is basically if you're layering boxes, what is the priority? Larger values considered first, smaller values considered last, and according to the tooltip, equal values considered in the order they were added. So if you, for example, have a background, you might want to put it at zero. And if you have buttons on top of the background, you'd set it to like 10 or a higher number. So the buttons take priority when you click on them. Now the rest of this is pretty simple. I'm just drawing a rectangle with the same dimensions. So that way we can visualize my hitbox. Because if I was to do this, for example, and just hit play, well, there's nothing there. You can't see the hitbox. The hitbox is just a collision primitive. Basically, it's just an invisible box that responds to being clicked on. Draw text. This is just a note I'm putting here to show us which box we clicked. Now, how does it know which box we click? Well, we have the event hitbox clicked event. This is an overrided function right here. You're going to find four of them. Hitbox clicked, and then you'll find hitbox released, end cursor over, and begin cursor over. So let me go ahead and do begin cursor over. I left those there so that way I can show you. Because event, like override, like any overridden events, once you override them, they get removed from the list. I just want to show you them. So for the hitbox clicked, whenever a hitbox is clicked, this event will fire and all it does is pass the name in for the hitbox that was clicked on. So if you click on this box, it'll say jump. If I had another one, it would say how high or throw or whatever I wanted in there. All I'm doing in this case is storing that value. So that way when I actually click on it, we can see the value here. Really simple. Now the hitbox begin cursor event and the other events are basically the basic, um, you could think of them as handling events for the cursor and the clicking and the rest of the hitbox. Clicked when I click the mouse down, released when I let go of the mouse, begin cursor over when my mouse goes over it, and end cursor over when my mouse leaves. So for example, I could do something like this and I could take our last hitbox check and let's actually set this to something else. We'll set this to over. So this way, when the over event fires, it's gonna change the word to over, and it's gonna say the word over. If I click on it, it says jump, and when I move my mouse over, it says over. And of course, we have the other event. If we wanted to, we could override end cursor over. You know, I could really simply just do something like this, and I can make this one say end over. 
So we can see our mouse going over, ending over, over, ending over, or clicking. You have four different events you can react to. And those are the cursor events for the hitbox and the clicked and released events for the hitbox, which require a add hitbox node to be used. And that's it, it's pretty simple. It's useful for if you need to have some form of input on your HUD, a simple menu, a simple button you can click on. If you need some form of input, you want your HUD to actually do something rather than just displaying, add a hitbox, have an event set up. If you have multiple events, it's pretty simple. You could do something like a uh, switch would probably be the easiest, a switch on name like this, and you can just switch based on the different names. One jump, one run, one swing, debug, whatever buttons they push. Just simply switch on name. You can change your names here. So for example, I could have this one be jump, and I could have another element in here, and I could have this be, you know, fly, and just have different switches based on the result from a hitbox click, and then have it do something. So that is our add hitbox node and the other hitbox functions. Really simple, really easy, and useful for adding input to your existing HUD.